Hi, in this video I'm going to describe how a dual beam system works. Now this is a popular product for alarm systems and what it is, it consists of two units and one unit is a sender and one is a receiver and it emits an infrared beam. Now the one I'm going to describe is made by a company called IDS and the product number, just in case you're interested, is SPT60. The 60 designates the detection length and I'll explain all that shortly. So I just want to unbox it and the immediate thing you should notice is there's two units. So this differs from a PIR. This isn't a passive infrared sensor as such. This is a dual beam system and how you can tell the difference straight away just by looking at it is there are two units because a PIR is usually one unit which will send out a zone of infrared detection areas while the beam is a little bit different as you can see I've got two units and in brief the one is a sender and the other one is a receiver and it will emit a dual beam this happens to be a dual beam you do get strip beams as well which emit a series of of beams and what it does is it sends out a beam dual beam and on the other side it detects that beam when that is broken well then we get the alarm trigger so just showing you what you get you will get the instructions okay if you're wondering what this is this is just a template for putting on the wall so it shows you where to drill the holes okay moving on Now, let's open these two units so you can have a look at the difference between the sender and the receiver. Okay, there's just a little screw here. And there's one on this side. Right, now in this model you do not have to take the screw completely out, it's, uh, it can slide, there is a recess there that allows it to slide and there you can see and I'm going to now open these two units. Now what you will notice is that the two units look almost identical. The only difference really is that the one unit does not require as many connectors as the other. They have the same amount of terminals but as you can see the uh, the wiring for the sender is different for, from the receiver. Now, they both require power. Positive, negative. Positive, negative. Now, the only difference is that the sender does not require anything further. You see, it only requires a positive and negative in order to create a dual beam from this photoelectric uh, part over here. Now, if you're wondering what that actually is, it's really just, um, I've got some diodes somewhere here. Here we go. Now, if you're familiar with electronics, this is really what it is. Now, I'm sure inside here they've got larger ones, but what it is, is the these are photodiodes, and the one emits an infrared signal, similar to your remote control on a, you know, your remote, TV remote control, and the other one is a detector. And what happens is it emits the infrared signal and the other one detects it. And when the detection is broken, or when the, the signal is broken, well then the volt drop across the terminals on the receiver changes. And that's what actually initiates the trip. Now if you're wondering why it doesn't look like that, well this is a lens. You see the point of this is that uh, it's actually trying to focus the, the infrared so that it doesn't spread over your whole garden or factory wherever you're installing it. So these are actually uh, focusing uh, um, devices here and inside are the photodiodes. Now, as I said, the sender just requires positive and negative. There is a tamper switch, so if someone does try and open the unit, you can uh, set it for an alarm if you want to, but most people don't do that. And if you're just wondering what else there is here, there's a power light. So when you switch it on, it will tell you that there's the uh, 12 volts or 5 volts, whatever your, um, your model requires. Most uh, alarm systems allow a variable input voltage and I can actually just read you the specifications on this IDS version and the allowable voltage for this one is anything from 12 to 28 volts so that's quite a large voltage range. Okay so that's the sender. Now the receiver requires more um, wires because it needs the positive, the negative and then the signal. 
because once the beam is broken, remember these are going to be facing each other at a designated distance which you choose, then once that signal is broken, well, a relay will open, will, uh, relay contact will actually activate, and then you will see the contacts here across the um, the pin three, four, and five, or the alarm. You know, you can set it as normally closed or normally open, but norm what we usually use is normally closed. And then once the detection is broken, it no longer detects the infrared, then it'll initiate a relay and what happens, it'll open the contacts here and that will go to your alarm panel to tell you there's an activation. Right, so I want to just uh, describe to you a little bit more about this thing. Now, if you could imagine a, I'm just using a laser pointer. So this is the principle of operation. The sender sends the infrared. Now, it's, it's not a laser, but I'm just giving you an example. The sender sends an infrared. And then what happens, I don't know if you can see that on the um, uh, face here, then when somebody walks in front of it, it actually breaks that, uh, that, that infrared signal. And then, and only then, when both of these uh, dual, that's why it's called a dual beam. Remember, I did say you can get a quad and a six and uh, an eight. You can get them with the strip beam. Um, well, only once those are broken, then it will initiate the trip. So that's just to give you an idea. So therefore, the positioning of these and the way you align them is very important. And that is why on all these things, they can move. Now, what, uh, what it allows for is there's a screw here, which actually allows you to not only turn it left and right, but also up and down. Because if you put this on a wall and... You put this on another wall and they slightly out of sync. You can see that the alignment is, maybe let's put it like this, the alignment is slightly off. Then what's going to happen is these beams are going to miss each other. Now, I do know that they're quite, these uh, ones are quite resilient in that they can still pick up when they haven't been aligned exactly straight because although it is a focused beam, it does have quite a, it still has a fairly wide beam width and they actually give it here in the instructions, they actually show here that even though the, um, that the, um, the, the actual zone where the infrared and what I want to call it leakage infrared is, is quite wide. So in my experiences, even when people have installed this a little bit skew, it still, it does pick up. And how we can measure that is on the on good beams, it actually gives you a level indicator. And when that uh, level indicator is on, it actually shows you that it's picking up the, the sender and that the level is correct. And then there's a signal LED here telling you, yes, uh, it's making good um, uh, reception of the infrared. So I, I do have a video on how to install these, but I'm just giving you the principle of operation. So therefore, on both of these, you can adjust the height or the angle let's put it and then obviously the uh, left and right movement now sometimes it does come with something like this now what this is is it actually allows you to look and actually see what you do is you put this in front of your eye and what it does is it actually it's almost like a magnifying glass so you can actually see uh, the the uh, uh, sender you know if you want to calibrate it with your naked eye so that is a nice feature now when i do this i actually just use a laser pointer and i use a spirit level and i put the laser pointer on top of the spirit level to get a level now, one last thing i'd like to tell you is that maybe you're wondering well how sensitive can you make the detection for example if you go like this like that quickly will it activate well there is a response time level which you can adjust here there's a a pot here, a potentiometer, which is a variable resistor, and therefore what it does is it allows you to adjust how long the person or animal or whatever it is needs to um, break these dual beams before the receiver triggers. So that's also a nice feature because a bird could fly past and especially if it's too sensitive, you'll get a lot of false alarms. So I normally set that uh, doing a walk test and, uh, and do that. So when you install this, make sure you install the sender uh, close to a power source and the receiver is going to need four at least four cores positive negative and alarm trigger and the sender only needs positive and negative so if you are 
you know, short of um, cores, maybe you've already done your alarm system and this is an add-on, just c connect this next to another zone, another a sensor where you can just buddy off the power, but this one will require sensor as well, the actual uh, trigger wires that will be connected to its own zone on your alarm system. And the last thing is just that these are not all the same. Some work for 10 meters, 20 meters, 30 meters, and often the inside uh, width the detection length is different to the outside detection length. You've got to think of things like rain, sun, and all those things. So you might find this is a 40 meter, this one is actually a 60 meter um, out, outdoor, but in indoors it could probably go easily to 90, maybe even 100 meter detection length. Right, just to clarify, this is a PIR and this is a beep. These are two different alarm products. This requires a transmitter and a receiver. This, it doesn't. This uh, has a detection zone and it is settable and it, this, this happens to be an Optics VXR so it's 90 degrees and anywhere within this zone the uh, PIR will activate passive infrared sensor. So even here on the sides you can see it is still activating there the red light, the LED is going on. While the beam however is different. It's got a very focused uh, detection zone. This happens to be firing straight so if I put my hand in front of it it is activating. But uh, keep in mind be beams don't always go straight. You can actually turn the the uh, inside um, Photo, uh, electric photo diodes, so they could be there or there. But the point is, transmitter receiver or receiver transmitter, but it's two units. And just to show you what the detection zone looks like, it is there for detecting in this area. Now, look, it's there and it's going to go straight all the way. At the gate, you should be able to see the receiving unit which is sitting somewhere there so all it means is that if anyone walks past like that or that then it will activate it will not activate outside of that area okay so just so you maybe you didn't see but this is the other side of the beam so anybody who walks in front of this will activate the beam so therefore you need to have power on both locations and that's it. So I hope that uh, explains how the beams work and how they are different from the PRR. Thanks for watching. Cheers.